Okay, welcome to the Delgado Squaw Branch. Today we just got done pulling birds, and I had a few people ask me about our lofts and how they're designed, and kind of the do's and don'ts and what you should uh, concentrate on. And some some things are important, some aren't. So uh, we had a pretty good week this week. We got quite a few birds, and uh, here are the birds that I'm actually saving so once a week I'll save birds from my top breeders and I'll use those to uh, replace my breeders that I call out now okay so this pin right here is, is uh, what we'll look at okay first thing is my pins or my lofts are 8 by 10 and I have 20 nest boxes on the wall. Okay, I have a wire top of the nest boxes going up to the ceiling to prevent birds from roosting on top of the nest boxes. They're just gonna crap up there and hide from you when you need to catch them. So there's no point in making your life more difficult. So we put the wire up there. Now, each nest box is two foot by two foot and they are 16 inches tall and basically when you cut up a piece of OSB if you use those dimensions you don't have any waste that's why uh, they don't need to be that tall but and then another thing is we uh, we keep all our nest boxes off the ground about 10 inches to a foot that way you have time for the manure to pile up and you don't have to clean it very often. We can go about a year, a year and a half before we uh, clean out the manure. And here I added an extra four nest boxes to this loft. So again, I put wire at the top of it to keep birds from going up there. And uh, it works out fine. They, it's it's better if you start a loft with all your nest boxes in it when you add start adding things it kind of changes the demeanor of the pen and of the loft so it's good to make sure you start with the number of nest boxes that you want to have and it's better to have more and then just put a piece of screen on them if they're not being used as you add birds, you can uh, remove the screens and add the birds to those nest boxes. Now I have lighting. I, my birds get 18 hours of daylight, so they're on timers. And then I also have misters over here, if you can see that. And that kills our mosquitoes and the flies to help get rid of uh, pox and make our uh, loft a little more enjoyable get rid of the pests now over here I made them a little narrower and a little shorter and I got the same number of boxes on this loft as I did on this one that I'm in now just by making them 20 inches instead of 24 inches and I shortened them all just a little bit and you can see what a difference it makes my wife and my daughter are short and they help pull birds so this worked out really well you just have to clean out the nest box a little sooner which is not a big deal uh, okay another thing that's important is your door you want to have a, uh, a spring yeah that's what it's called pretty complicated you want a spring that way if somebody leaves the door open or forgets to lock it It'll stay closed and they'll keep the birds in and keep the cats or whatever else out. Now we have a water system here and I have 10 lofts that are all connected on one water system on one side of the building. And then the other side of the building is a complete separate water system. You don't want to have too many water systems connected to each other in case something happens. You don't lose water for a large number of birds. And then we do have a drain on the end of the building. We drain our waters once a week. Uh, in the summertime, 
we might go a little bit more depending how hot it is just so the birds have cool water to drink we do have uh, chemicals that are added to the water to prevent uh, bacteria from growing okay so we got our grit boxes and our feeders the pipe on the bottom here we put our uh, our, our mice, our mouse poison in there. It's our, our bait station basically. There's a piece of wire. That wire runs through the bait and that way it, the bait has a, a hole in the middle of it and it keeps the poison inside the tube so the birds don't have access to it. That's pretty important too and I put it by the water because they could pretty much eat anywhere but they have very few places they could drink water so I put my poison next to the water and then we have a, uh, a board up here that we keep track of our records each nest box has a their band and uh, these are the band marks aren't on here really some of them are PS is pink and silver each nest box has a band but sometimes we don't transfer those over to new cards and then you can keep track of how many squab you produce for that month and uh, for years past and that's how we determine which birds we're going to keep for breeders and then we document whenever we vaccinate so you don't have to try and remember when you did stuff that you can walk into your loft and just look at the board and see what's going on so I'm not sure if there's anything else oh yeah okay so our our nest boxes don't go up to the to the ceiling now in the summertime here it gets really hot and it's pretty unbearable if you get up next to that the roof in the summertime so if you build your nest boxes up to the roof you're probably not going to have birds up there in the summertime it's the heat rises the roof gets hot so you want to make sure you got plenty of space between your ceiling and your bottom nest box that's that's pretty important uh, if I think of anything else I will let you guys know uh, appreciate you who are watching my videos if you like them and they're helping you wonderful give me a thumbs up subscribe to my channel and remember uh, we're part of California squad producers if you want to help support our families and, and ranches like this you can buy our product online and i will put the phone number at the bottom uh, once again thank you god bless